upgrades. My name is Justin Pritchard. This is the new 2022 Honda Civic. Big story here, everything has been upgraded. The body structure, the steering, the suspension, the braking system, all with benefits to how this car drives. Honda is seriously not messing around with this thing. Let's take a closer look. Earlier this year, Honda's Alliston, Ontario assembly plant began production of this 11th generation Honda Civic, complete with an extensive redesign and overhaul. This Canadian-built favourite hits the road with major upgrades to key systems and components and delivers the Civic's best yet driving experience. I recently spent 2,000 kilometres at the wheel of this latest car, testing and filming for various assignments on TV and web, and in this video, I'm going to share everything I learned in that process with you. Most of these impressions come from a highway-intensive test drive and extensive use on the secondary highways and backroads of northern Ontario. So for rural drivers and long-distance travellers, I hope this video will be nothing less than the most informative and comprehensive review on this new Honda Civic that you've ever seen. My tester was a top dog Civic Touring with an asking price of about 30500 Canadian dollars with every option on the roster. The driving experience starts with the Civic's seats and seating position. Drivers drop down low into the cabin, and the leather seats are immediately slippery for easy entry and exit, but also immediately supportive, with bolstering that's both stabilizing and comfortable. In quick order, drivers are seated and comfy with minimal effort, riding low within the machine's cabin but still rewarded with good outward sight lines. If you're a fan of that low-down, in-control, anti-crossover driving feel, I think you'll like this setup. Almost enough space to stretch out. Nothing is uh, cramped. These seats are fantastic. Really good support. A uh, little bit cramped here for my right hand knee if you sit with your legs a little wider apart. At five foot ten, the headroom here, even with the sunroof, I've got the full width of my hand above my head. That's with the seat cranked all the way down here. Let's see how I would fit in the back seat behind myself. And you should always check this when you're test driving a car if you have adult passengers that might be sitting in the back seat. So behind someone of my size, five foot ten, uh, I've got uh, the full width of my hand and then some in terms of knee room. Headroom getting a little tight but sufficient. We can see the sunroof bulkhead is up here, so we've got a reduction in headroom ahead of us, but above my head where I need it, I've got just a couple of fingers worth. Armrest with cup holders here, of course. Uh, two high-speed charging ports there. Heated seat controls for the back on each door. Uh, those are right here. Uh, so in all, I'd say an interior that can comfortably accommodate four adults for even a longer trip. Between the driver and the tall upright windscreen is an all-digital instrument cluster that's easily manipulated and customized with a set of toggle dials on the steering wheel. The on-screen graphics and the process of flicking through the various display outputs and menus is a leap ahead of the last generation car, and the same goes for the central touchscreen nearby. I've been complaining about Honda's display graphics for years, but in the latest Civic, things are looking slick, modern, and top of the line. Drive mode selector right down here on the center console. Referenced up here on the screen, uh, Sport, Normal, and Econ. And again, on your test drive, you'll want to make sure that you try all three of these because I think you'll find a favorite uh, pretty quickly. This turns off the engine auto stop function if you don't want that on. Uh, electronic parking brake, just hold the brake pedal lift on that. Uh, by not having a handle there, we've got more room for things like cup holders and a larger, more accommodating center console. Uh, brake hold, interesting. We uh, tap this and we can see that light up in here. And basically that holds the car stationary once we've come to rest without having to put the car in park. Little climate control adjustment dials here. This is sort of interesting. These just go around uh, 360 degrees. They don't rotate. Uh, these just sort of turn around like that. Oh, and bonus points for the hazard lights, which are right here, front and center, where they belong. The trunk release button right here sort of near your window switches and mirror controls and what that does is makes it really easy for you to just quickly get out and pop your trunk sort of all in one motion like this. Wireless Android Auto hooks up in about 10 seconds, key functions are upscaled into the central screen and the phone begins recharging in the wireless charging tray. There's no cord or clutter required. That's less distraction in your driving environment. Finally, a punchy Bose stereo system helps complete the multimedia experience. In over a thousand kilometers of highway driving, I appreciated the upscale listening experience. 
The Civic's rigid new body structure is even stiffer than its predecessor, boasting respective improvements of 8 and 13% to torsional and bending rigidity. The stronger a vehicle's structure, the less it flexes when striking a bump in the road, which pumps air through the vehicle's cabin and results in added noise. So a stronger structure means less flexing and from the driver's seat, a ride that stays quieter more of the time when the going gets rough. Stronger body structures also make a better foundation from which to tune a vehicle's suspension system, so as a result from the driver's seat, the new Civic is easily as good as I've ever seen at this price point when it comes to maintaining a dense, solid, and comfortable drive, even on badly crumbling back roads. The highway ride is similarly impressive, specifically since the car feels heavy, sturdy, and quiet here too. So when it comes to the new Civic's feel on the road, my $30,500 tester punches well above its weight. If you're shopping around, I think you'll find the Nissan Sentra and Subaru Impreza to offer a similarly impressive drive on rougher surfaces. Additional upgrades to the Civic's chassis saw engineers hunt down and eliminate friction from braking system parts, ball joints, and even the spring and damper alignment of the suspension. By removing as much friction as possible from these areas, the Civic handles, steers, and even brakes with a more precise, eager, and polished feel than I expect for the money. Drivers can expect a vehicle with steering feel, braking feel, handling, and ride quality that are all dialed in and balanced nicely off of one another, and that gives you a convincingly high-end feel that's not unlike what you'd expect from an entry luxury model that costs thousands more. This all comes together beautifully on a winding highway where I found the Civic does its best work. The car glides from bend to bend with the sort of smooth, chill, and athletic poise I usually expect from something more expensive. The steering is smooth and precise, but not twitchy, and that makes it easy for drivers to dial in their selected line more easily the first time. During cornering, the suspension takes a set early and the car remains flat and tidy. This inspires confident corner carving with less need to slow down or readjust your trajectory into a bend. There's less second guessing and readjusting which reduces driver workload. Even the brake pedal response feels fine-tuned to inspire confidence with a strong initial bite at the top of the pedal and a precise and easy to modulate feel when you dig in a little deeper. So for the first time, I think what we've got here is a mainstream version of the Civic that has some serious appeal to driving enthusiasts. If you're one of them, take care to use Sport Mode on your test drive. The 1.5-liter turbo engine is a revised power unit that's based on the engine from the last generation Civic. The new power plant has revised turbocharger plumbing and runs VTEC to optimize breathing on the exhaust cams. Output is rated at 180 horsepower and 177 pounds of torque, though an assault on engine noise means this power plant also operates more quietly more of the time, which helps match that high-end feel imparted by the drive. It's all bolstered by improved torque converter performance from the CVT transmission, which gives it a feel that's more direct and less soggy. Thing is, in normal or econ drive modes, enthusiast drivers may find the powertrain is too numbed down. Throttle response is reduced, and the engine and transmission work to keep the revs low and steady. That's perfect for the light-footed driver, but those with heavier boots will need to toggle into sport mode, which tightens and heavies up the highway steering feel, and more importantly, puts more of the engine's torque more easily within striking distance more of the time. The point is, be sure to try all three modes on your test drive because there is a good chance you'll find a favorite pretty quickly. My gripes mostly relate to operating the Honda Civic in reverse, strangely. The backup camera angle, the viewing angle here is great. Uh, I can see all the way down the laneway to the left and to the right with this wide angle viewing mode. There are a few other ones we can pick from here. The problem that I have is just that the graphics are not very good. You can do much better for the money on uh, backup camera graphics if that's important to you. And if you're doing a lot of running around in a city setting, spending a lot of time in parking lots in tightly congested areas, that can be an issue. Further, I found throttle response in reverse to be frustrating at times, specifically reversing into my driveway from a busy street requires a hearty smash on that pedal. Elsewhere, look for adult-friendly rear seating in the Civic sedan, generous at-hand storage provisions for smaller items, and plenty of access to standard high-speed USB charging ports. 
ultimately, here's a four-door machine with, I figure, the most dialed-in driving experience you'll find for the dollar, and one that delivers an excellent on-the-road feel across a surprisingly wide range of situations. Shoppers after something sportier can check out the Civic Hatchback, Civic SI, and Civic Type R as well. More on those later. Thank you for watching. My name is Justin Pritchard, and until next time, take care and drive safe. Thank you.